Joining me now is William Lee. He's chief economist at the Milken Institute. William, um, got to ask for your reaction to this IMF World Bank global growth forecast. Any surprises? Well, Elaine, what was surprising was that uh, the IMF was very optimistic that China was the bright spot in their forecast because China's growth was really a little bit faster than they had anticipated. The China's rebound from the opening up from COVID has been much stronger than they thought. And one thing they didn't mention, though, was that unfortunately China's growth is mainly domestic services and domestic consumption. And that's the policy that Xi Jinping has put in place. And that's a right policy for China to rebalance its mix toward more domestic consumption. But that also means that it's less of a local locomotive effect for the rest of the world. That is, China will not be importing as much from the rest of the world. And, ex and the export engine that China has always been may not fire as strongly as it has before because the orders from the rest of the world have been very weak because the rest of the world is now concerned with fighting inflation and growth has been slowing down in the rest in the U.S. and in Europe. Well, let's break this all down. Um, let's start with the domestic front. Um, what are you seeing there? I mean, people are coming out of COVID. They're starting to travel. Um, are things there moving a little faster than expected? The IMF and the World Bank's forecast a little bit more optimistic than even the Chinese government. Oh, absolutely. And, and and that's to be expected after the rebound. We saw in every country that opened up uh, from COVID restrictions that there was a very strong rebound. The big question for China is whether this rebound will persist into the next year. Will people be confident enough to spend money because they know that the real estate market is going to come back to equilibrium again? They know that the youth unemployment will be handled by the policies that are already being put in place by the government. And the, the, the household income will be much more assured so that people can be confident to spend rather and save their income. That's the real question for China right now. Right, and I think you, you mentioned the timeline. You know, how much of what's happening in China will will we see this ripple effect? How long before we see something happen in, in the region and other parts of the world? Are we thinking the end of the year, early 2024, especially areas that are still suffering from high inflation? I think one thing that's for sure is that China will have in, a very enjoyable, strong growth and, and strong rebound over the next six months to to a year. The, the, the question is, will the growth in Asia, which has been been becoming the source of a lot of China's uh, manufacturing prowess and, and has really been a, a place where a lot of Chinese manufacturing has gone to, will the rest of Asia, be uh, their growth, also allow China to grow? Because China now will have new markets with which uh, to uh, export intermediate inputs and to import uh, final goods and services from, uh, from these countries. So the growth in Asia can be a very good thing for China if China's domestic consumption sustains itself, and more importantly, income growth and confidence comes back to the uh, to the Chinese economy. So day one over, what do you think we can expect from the uh, remaining days of the spring meetings? What will you be watching for? The, the words of, of, of wisdom that should be coming from this meeting would be, we need to have less uncertainty. And that means we have to do something about the war uh, between Russia and Ukraine. Some kind of resolution has to be put on the on the table. China can play a tremendous role in that in that regard because of China's close association with Vladimir Putin. Uh, the other thing would be the the warnings that they are giving us about the global financial system. Will the bank runs in the United States and in parts of Europe start to cascade into something much more severe, or will they be just written off as as individual bad badly managed banks and we shouldn't worry about the whole system? Right, the latter has has been the policy line from everybody that, that has spoken, from Janet Yellen to the Federal Reserve and to the ECB. But a lot of investors are a little uncertain about the safety and soundness of their bank deposits. William Lee, always great to get your take. Thank you for joining us, as always. Thanks, Elaine.